of resurrection will work in your life. Revival time has come for you. Restoration time has come for you. And the time for you to have more than double of everything you had before, that time has come for you in Jesus' name. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. He suffered for something. He suffered to give you all the blessings of heaven. And as your fellowship with him in his suffering, all those blessings of Calvary will become yours. Be made conformable unto his death. You'll be conformable, conformed unto him in Jesus' name. Tonight we're beginning this retreat with the message, the wonder of his resurrection power. Any wonder you can think about, any need you have in your life, the wonder of his resurrection power, spiritual miracle, physical miracle, and the domestic miracle, everything you need, the wonder of his resurrection power. Wonder in your life. Wonder in your family. Wonder in your very soul. And all the things that have set you back before, at this retreat, everything will be cancelled in Jesus' name. The wonder of his resurrection power. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the saving power of his resurrection. Because he rose from the dead, and because the stone was rolled away, and because the angels came from heaven, and then they said, he is not here, he is risen. That resurrection brings saving power to everyone that will call upon the Lord. Number one, the saving power of his resurrection. Number two, the strengthening power of his resurrection. Weakness will vanish away. Strength will come to your life. You'll be stronger than you ever were in your life in Jesus' name. The Lord will strengthen you. Any load you have to carry, and you don't have the strength to carry that load, greater strength will come. Greater power will come. You will have strength. This journey of your life to the ultimate progress, the strength to carry on in the journey, the Lord will grant unto you. Discouragement will vanish away. Weakness will vanish away. Fainting will vanish away. If you have been conquered, you are now going to rise up and you are going to be a conqueror in Jesus' name. The strengthening power of his resurrection. Number three, the supernatural power of his resurrection. When you come to the edge of the natural and people say there is nothing they can do for you anymore, the supernatural power of God will take over. And tonight, it's taking over. Don't give up. That situation will be reversed. Don't give up. That situation is going to stop. Don't give up. All those things that there's no natural solution about, supernatural power of his resurrection will roll everything away tonight in Jesus' name. One, the saving power. Two, the strengthening power. Three, the supernatural power of his resurrection. Number one now, the saving power of his resurrection in John chapter 11. John chapter 11, here is the testimony of Christ himself. And here is the statement he made when everything appeared gloomy and dark and it appeared in the family of the people he got to that everything was down and they thought the end has come. When Christ comes into your life, it's just the beginning. And this is the beginning of great, great things in Jesus' name. In John chapter 11, verse 25, And Jesus said 
unto her like he's saying unto you today. He's saying unto me today. And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet he shall live. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet he will live. The Lord was talking to Martha about the death of Lazarus. And he said, as you believe in me, though he had been dead, he'll come alive again. But he wasn't saying that only for Lazarus. He's saying it for you. That even though you are dead, you will come alive in his salvation in Jesus' name. And look at the way the scripture uh, interprets that death. As he tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, reading from verse 1. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. And you are sick quickened who are dead in trespasses and sins. Everyone who has not met Christ the Savior. Everyone who has not received eternal life from Christ the Savior is dead in sins and trespasses. And the Lord here says, He quickens those who are dead in sins and trespasses. Sin kills. Transgression kills. But then, as I come to Christ, with the dead spirit and the dead soul and the dead in life, salvation will come, eternal life will come, you'll be quickened in Jesus' name. But still, wherein in time past, you walked according to the course of this world. It's talking about a past life of deadness. A past life of not having eternal life. And he said, in time past, before meeting Christ, the resurrection and the life. Here is what we were. We were walking in the course, according to the course of this world. According to the priest of the power of the air. He's talking about the power of Satan. Satan kills. Satan deadens life. And if you have been obedient to Satan, obedient to the powers of the air, obedient to the spirits controlling the world, it brings deadness, spiritual deadness, and um, domestic deadness, moral deadness, everything around is dead. Because of yielding to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. Those are people who have not known the Lord. And it says, when that spirit is at work, where that spirit is at work, it brings deadness. It says, among them also, we all add our conversation, our manner of life in times past. It says, all of us without exception. All the offspring of Adam, everyone that has come out of a woman through a man, it says we were all like that. That means we were all dead spiritually. And it says, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But now it says, we can come to Christ. And as we come to Christ, eternal life will come. Salvation will come. That deadness will vanish away. Look at verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he has loved us, even when we were dead in sins. He's going back to that again. He wants you to understand. You might be walking about physically, your physical life, but you don't have spiritual life. You don't have eternal life. We were dead, but now we're saved. He says he has quickened us together with Christ. Quickened us together with Christ. 
as we believe in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'll say, Lord, I present myself to you. I accept without you, I've been dead. Without your grace, I've been dead. And without your salvation, I've been living a dead inch kind of life. I was dead to your commandments, dead in conscience, and dead in heart. But now I come to you, and it says, by grace are ye saved. Look at verse 6. And has raised us up together. That he is together with Christ. He raises us up. Resurrection power is coming in your life. And made us see together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come. He might show the exceeding riches of his grace. In his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith. It's for everyone. The grace of God is available. And he says, it is through faith. As you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you turn away from your past. Turn away from darkness. Turn away from your weakness. Turn away from your bad habits. And you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Gift of God. Eternal life, gift of God. Salvation, gift of God. Resurrection life, gift of God. And it is for whosoever will ask and receive You'll have it today. I said you'll have it today. It tells us in Luke chapter 24 how to have that saving power that comes in our lives and it turns everything around and we're totally transformed and we're totally changed and his resurrection power works unhindered in our lives. How will it happen Look at Luke chapter 24, reading here from verse 46. Luke chapter 24, verse 46, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Already he is risen, and now as he rose, he came to speak to his own disciples. He said, it was written that before you can have life, before you can have salvation, before you can have the grace of God flowing into your life, before your name can be written in the book of life, Christ must die for you. But not only die, he must rise again. And now he tells us in verse 47, Having known about the death of Christ, having known about the burial of Christ, having known about the resurrection of Christ, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. It says, We'll preach, and you will hear, and you will receive his message of repentance. You understand? Sin deadens you. And sin kills everything that should be alive in your life. But now you turn away from that deadening sin and you turn to Christ, the resurrection and the life. And then life from him will bring eternal life in your life. It will happen in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter 10, after that repentance, after that turning away from all our sins and the bad habits that deadened our conscience, that deadened our lives, that deadened our spiritual life, now we turn to him in faith. But we must believe in his resurrection power. Look at Romans chapter 10. Verse 8, but what says it? The word is nigh thee, is near you. 
even honor in thy mouth and in thine heart that he is the word of faith which will preach that he thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. You see that? If you confess with your mouth that you cannot have life except from the Lord Jesus. You cannot have salvation except from the Lord Jesus. Your trying by yourself will not do it. Your struggles will not do it. Your personal sacrifice will not do it. Your traditional religion will not do it. Salvation is found only in Christ. It says that if you will confess with your mouth and let God hear that confession and let everyone around you hear that confession and let your conscience identify with that confession that he that shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved he's saying that salvation salvation from sin salvation from the dominion of sin salvation from the power of sin salvation from the tyranny of sin that salvation comes as you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus died for you and that he rose again and that in that resurrection he brought your salvation your justification look at verse 10 for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness we don't believe unto sinfulness we believe unto righteousness we don't believe into darkness we believe unto righteousness we don't believe unto continuing to do evil we believe unto righteousness with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation you confess what you believe and then real salvation will come and is able to save everyone here tonight. I said, is able to save everyone here tonight. If you are not saved yet, it will save your soul. If you are not victorious over sin yet, tonight, resurrection power will come to you. You'll be victorious over sin in Jesus' name. A bad habits are destroying your life. Tonight, as you bring Christ, who says I'm the resurrection alive, you bring him to your life, all those bad habits he'll crush, he'll destroy. New life will come to you in Jesus' name. Can he do it? Look at Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost. No matter how far you have gone in sin, the grace of God will go after you and reach out to you tonight in Jesus' name. No matter how impossible you thought that you could not be saved because you have gone so far, and because your conscience, your heart has told you that this appears impossible, that seemingly impossible thing will be done by Christ with his resurrection power. Wherefore, is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. But you must come. That come unto God by him. That is to come through Jesus Christ. And as you come by him unto God. He ever liveth to make intercession for them. Verse 26. For such an high priest became us. Who is holy. Harmless. 
undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. First John chapter 3 from verse 4. First John chapter 3, reading from verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresses also the law. If you are wondering, what is sin? Sin is transgressing the law of God. What does that mean? The Lord draws a circle on the ground. And he says, stay inside that circle. If you go outside that circle and you cross the line, you transgress. That's what he's saying. His word marks out the circle in which we are to live. His word gives the territory of the life we ought to live. And it covers every area of life. A moral life, a spiritual life, an interpersonal, interrelationship with other people. The Lord draws the line. He says, stay in this circle, then you are righteous. But because of the nature of Adam, fallen Adam in man, every man goes beyond the circle he has drawn. And every time you go and cross that line, that's transgression, that's sin. That's why it says in verse 4, Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. That sin has various names. When it says, thou shalt not steal. If you don't steal, you are inside that circle. If you cross that line and you steal, that's transgression, that's sin. When it says, thou shalt not commit adultery, it draws a circle. And as long as you stay inside that circle, you live a righteous life. But when you cross the line and you commit adultery, you have transgressed. And sin, transgression, brings death. And you can't save yourself once you are outside that circle. You cannot bring yourself in. Only Christ can do that. That's why it says in verse 5, And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. It was manifested. He came to this world. So it will take away our sins. In the plural. Small sins, so-called. Big sins, so-called. Mortal sins, so-called. Secret sins, so-called. Public sins, so-called. Common sins, so-called. Occasional sin, so-called, every form of sin. Christ has come to remove sin from you and to remove you from sin. He was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin. Verse 6, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. When he forgives our sin, he brings us back into that circle. And in that circle, as we abide in him, depending on his grace, enjoying his salvation, we will not sin. We will not go outside that circle again and cross the line. Whosoever abideth in him, sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither known him. Whosoever seen it, how does that happen again? Because there is temptation coming from outside that circle. There is a magnet outside that circle. And that magnet or temptation drawing people 
if you remain in the grace of God, in the strength of God, you will not yield to the temptation. But when you yield, that means you have committed sin and you are no more abiding in him. Little children, verse 7, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Verse 8, he that committeth sin is of the devil. You see that? It's always going up and down. He goes outside the circle. And then he cries, Lord, I've sinned, I've sinned. And then the following day, he goes outside the circle again. Lord, I'm sorry, I've sinned again. And he keeps on going outside that circle. He committes, he transgresses. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that she might destroy the works of the devil. The time has come. He will destroy all the works of the devil. All the transgression he will remove. And then he will give you a new saving power. That saving power will keep you standing and will keep you victorious. You'll not be going outside that circle of righteousness again in Jesus' name. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Some people say, how do I know whether I'm born again or not? Is it by feeling? Is it by flash of light? Is it by an audible voice? The Lord is telling us that once you receive Jesus into your heart, if Jesus is really there, is there in resurrection power. And because it's there in resurrection power, he gives you the power to live above sin. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For the seed of God, his seed remains in him. And he cannot sin. He cannot sin. He cannot sin. He will not be given excuses for sinning. When he's really born again, he says... He cannot sin because he's born of God. In this, the children of God are manifest. And the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness, is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. That resurrection power will work salvation in every life. No matter how far you've gone, the Lord Jesus will bring you back into that circle of righteousness. And the grace of God will keep you abiding and remaining in Jesus' name. Number two now, the strengthening power of his resurrection. The strengthening power of his resurrection. When he saves us, he also gives us strengthening power. Number one, saving power. Salvation has come. Christ is your savior. And Christ lives on the inside of you. And now for you to abide in that salvation. And to abide in all the promises of God. He gives you strengthening and power. Look at First Peter chapter 1. Verse 3, First Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He brings hope to us and he brings vitality into our lives and he makes us to have a great future in that salvation. 
And it says, the Father God in heaven does that, bringing us to a lively hope. By the new birth, we are begotten again. And it's through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance, in verse 4, incorruptible and undefiled. And that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. The moment you are born again, your name is written in the book of life in heaven. And the spirit of God bears witness with your heart. That was saved. You are born again. Your name is in heaven. You also have the inheritance in heaven. But look at the strengthening power in verse 5. Who are kept by the power of God. Who are kept by the power of God. You see, the people who think they are saved, and there's no strengthening power, and they cannot stand. They cannot withstand persecution, or they cannot stand at the time of temptation. And they're always falling, always falling. There's no real salvation there. New Testament salvation. New Testament salvation gives us the power that strengthens us against sin, against Satan. Against all the temptations of society who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. I pray that power, sustaining power, in every challenge of our lives will work mightily in your life. Second Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, reading from verse 9. And he said unto me, and he said unto me, remember God is no respecter of persons. As he said to Paul, he says to Peter. As he said to Peter, he said to John. As he said to the believers of those days, he speaks to the believers of this day. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. You cannot say my temptations are so many. That's why I cannot stand. My grace is sufficient for thee. You cannot say my bad habits in the past were so strong and the unbreakable. That's why I cannot stand. It says, my grace is sufficient for you. You cannot say my community is so dark and so dirty that I see so much sin, I see so much evil, and because of that, I cannot stand. It says, no, my grace is sufficient for you. You cannot say there is um, a companion there is a partner, there is a wife, there is a husband. He is not born again. I am born again. But his life has such terrible negative influence on me. That's why I cannot stand. No, he says, for my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. It will overcome your weakness. He will overrule your weakness. You will be strong. And the grace that brought you in, into the kingdom, that grace will abide in your life, and that grace will make you victorious over evil in Jesus' name. In the office where you are working, if you are the only believer there, and all the others are unbelievers, and the dupe, some bad financial things, you will stand. You will not compromise. You will not join them to do evil. You say, what if they are many and mighty? What if they are powerful? It says, my grace is sufficient for you. You will live a victorious life in Jesus' name. 
that's what resurrection power is all about. That's what the strengthening power is all about. It'll make you different. It'll make you distinct. And whatever challenges are around you, victory has come in Jesus' name. What if you're persecuted for righteousness? That is, you're righteous and you're endeavoring to keep inside that circle of righteousness. And because of that, all those who are unrighteous around you, they persecute you. And the persecution is so much. Are you going to fall because of that? No, you will not fall. I say, no, I will not fall. Look at what it says in that verse 9. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. The moment you say no to that temptation, greater power will come to you. The moment you say no to darkness drawing you to the world, more power will come unto you. Therefore, in verse 10, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, I take pleasure. In distresses, I take pleasure. For Christ's sake, look at this, for when I am weak, then am I strong. When I'm weak in myself, when I'm weak in my own natural energy, then the grace of God coming from the resurrection power of Christ will flow into your life, you will be strong. Am I talking to any strong person there? You will be strong in Jesus' name. And today, you'll be stronger than you were yesterday. Tomorrow, you'll be stronger than you are today. And as your days are, so shall your strength be. As the challenges are, so shall your strength be. As the difficulties increase, and as the temptations multiply, so with the sustaining power, the straining power, also increase in your life in Jesus' name. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 6. And I read from verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Can you be weak in the Lord? Defeated in the Lord? Overcome in the Lord? When you feel weak, it's like you're not staying abiding in the Lord. Because when you remain in the Lord, when you stand in the Lord, not in yourself, you're strong. Strong against every trial. Strong against every difficulty. And strong against the world. And strong against the flesh. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. We don't get discouraged in the Lord. If you are abiding in the Lord, you cannot say the pressure is too much. The load is too much. The dangers are too many. The challenges are too great. I mean, the Lord, but I'm weak. Not at all. When you remain in the Lord, you're strong. And I pray today, you'll be stronger. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In the power of his might. When you allow that resurrection power to come more and more in your life, makes you strong. Put on the whole armor of God that she may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You will stand against all those uh, strategies of the devil, 
all the craftiness of the devil, all the temptations of the devil, all the inviting uh, kind of sweet things of the devil, you'll say no. I say no. I say no. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Look at them there. The principles, principalities, the powers, the princes, the rulers, the authorities of darkness, of the darkness of the world. Occultic power will not overcome you. Evil power will not overcome you. Anything behind the closet of the devil will not overcome you. Even wicked spirits in high places, they will not overcome you. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, whatever evil day, the day of temptation, the day of calamity, the day of arrows and attacks, and the days of terrible, terrible temptation, thank God you will stand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench. How many darts? I said, how many darts? What kind of darts? Are they ordinary darts? Fiery darts. Fiery darts. Victory has come. Every moment of the day, victory for the child of God. Victory over sin. I said victory over sin. Yeah. You will have a testimony of righteousness. Yeah. A testimony of the purified life. A testimony of the victorious life. Because you will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Any dart, any arrow of the paths of darkness, you will not cry. You will stand and your shield of faith will break and crush everything in Jesus' name. No power of the world will crush you. No power of the world will destroy you. And no power of the world will cut short your life. Say big, big amen. You will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You go to the village, you will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You're on the road, you will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You are in the dream, you will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Something they call incurable disease come to your body is just knocking at the door to see whether you have lost your strength or not. Cancer will not kill you. All the things that kill Egyptians will not kill you. You will quench. I am able. I am able. I am able to quench, see, now to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. 
May victory be yours all round in Jesus' name. Verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. The word of God in your mouth will be like the sword of the Spirit. It will pierce the enemy. It will cut down the enemy. It will crush all the powers of darkness. I see you victorious. I said, I see you victorious. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. As thou not known, if you have not known today, you will know. As thou not heard, if you have not heard it before today, you will hear that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the heavens, all the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faith. He giveth power to the faith. Tonight, the power you never possessed before, you will possess. He giveth power to the faith, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. He increaseth strength. I see the level of your strength increasing. I see the level of your power increasing. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But, 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 they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. When we come to a retreat like this, the Lord wants to answer every prayer. But if we don't pray, there's nothing to answer. If you sow zero, you reap zero. If you sow ten, you're going to reap on the account of that ten. If you sow a hundred, you're going to reap on account of that hundred. If you pray, you're going to reap on the account of that prayer. But if there is no prayer after hearing the word, Immediately we say, let us pray, and the overseer takes over, or camp commandant takes over, or the pastor at the retreat over there takes over, you leave, and you are rushing somewhere, then there's no strength, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Every chain that tied you down, pulling you down in the past, all those chains will be sh shattered. All the cords that bound you before, it's at the time of prayer, all those cords, they'll be totally broken. Everything that has been pulling you down, the force of gravity, you want to rise every time it's pulling you down. At the time of prayer, all that force of gravity will be removed away from you. Imagine that aeroplane flying up and flying up and flying beyond the eagle. The force of gravity has no power on that aeroplane anymore. There is an engine inside that aeroplane. That's the engine of resurrection power. That is going to come in your life. And you are going to rise and rise and rise higher and higher and higher. Imagine that aeroplane up there. Somebody down here throws a stone at that aeroplane. Does it reach the aeroplane? As a mount higher from today, every stone they try to throw at you will never reach you. 
Look at that aeroplane. Somebody is trying to shoot an arrow. And that arrow goes up. But the aeroplane is higher, far beyond that arrow. From today as you wait upon the Lord. Every arrow that is thrown at you from the village or from the city or from your enemies or from the people who are power of darkness, that arrow will never get to you. You will cross every river. You will go beyond every mountain. Every impossibility in your life will become possible. It is for those who wait upon the Lord, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Do you remember when you were at school and they chose uh, some of the students to run? And it was just some meters or some yards. And you were part of them. On your march, get steady, go. And then everybody just went off like that. And maybe you, before you get to the middle, you are losing your breath and losing your strength. You are weary, you see. I will not die. I cannot die. I came here to study. I didn't come here to run. Let them run. They got the prize at the relay race. You never got anything. But no, today, the story will change. You will run. You will run the race. You will not be weary. You will walk you will not fit. Number one, saving power is available here today. Number two, strengthening power is available here today. Number three, supernatural power. Supernatural power. Well, if you look at that word supernatural, there is the word super, there is natural. And there are many things we can do in a natural strength. But there is a limit to the length, to the height, and to the progress natural power or strength can make. But when you come to the end of your natural power, the super will take over. In your life, the super will take over. In your heart, the super will take over. In your fight against evil, the super will take over. In your walking victoriously and nothing to stop you, the super will take over in Jesus' name. Matthew, Matthew, chapter 28, verse 18, Matthew. Chapter 28, verse 18. Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, Tell me, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All power. He had been dead, put to death three days earlier. On the resurrection morning, a heavy stone was on the grave, on the tomb. And the women come in, they were saying, who will roll away the stone for us? Natural power could not do that. But super came in. The stone was rolled away. Every stone that is put on you, suppressing you, you see where to go, you cannot go. Today, where your natural strength has failed, super. Somebody help me shout, super. Supernatural power will come. Roll away the stone in Jesus' name. 
the soldiers were standing guard. And they said, he will not come out. Peter could not come there. He didn't have the authority. He didn't have the connection. He didn't have anything to tell those soldiers, guarding the tomb, get out of there. The natural power failed for super. I said super. Supernatural power took over. All those soldiers fell to the ground as if they were dead. All those who were guarding your life. And they say, you will not go beyond this level. You will not go beyond this line. You will not go beyond this point. And they have been there. The stone is there. The soldiers who are there. And your natural strength, you cried, you shouted, you talked to people, you sought counseling. The stone was still there. The soldiers were still there. Tonight, I said tonight, supernatural power. That supernatural power will come. All those evil personalities that are standing guard and they're saying, you will not come out supernatural power will make them fall. It says, all power is given unto me in heaven. All the power in the sky, all the power around the seas that have tried to keep you down. And then you have been saying, I wish I had, I wish I had, I wish I had all power tonight. Supernatural power tonight will crush everything. Tonight, I want to announce to you that you are free to go as high as you want to go. I want to announce to you tonight you are free to be as strong as you want to be. You are free to be as victorious as you want to be. Sickness has been putting you down. Tonight, I announce to you, you are free to be as healthy as you want to be. All power in heaven and in earth is given unto me. Go ye therefore. Go ye therefore. In that power, go ye therefore. In that strength, go ye therefore. You will go and climb every mountain. You will go and cross every sea. You will go and overcome every temptation. In the Bible, there was an Elijah. You are free to be an Elijah. There was an Elisha. You are free to be an Elisha. In the Bible, there were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They went through the fire. They were not burnt. Tonight, you are free to be as strong, as protected, as immune as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In the Bible, there was one Daniel. He went to the lion's den. There are many lions in this world. And from tonight, you're free. Go into that lion's den. Come out. Nothing will hurt your life. There was a Paul. He was in the prison with Silas. And then in the prison, they began to sing. And they began to praise the Lord. All their chains were broken. Tonight, you're free to be another Paul. You're free to be another Silas. Power has come. Power has come. Power in salvation. Power in healing. Power for deliverance. Power for sanctification. Power for protection. Power for moving mountain. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore. Go in this thy power. Rise up and receive that power. 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 Supernatural. 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 
supernatural, supernatural power. It's just tonight. You're free tonight. You're free to be as strong as you want to be. You're free to be as victorious as you want to be. You're free to be as powerful as you want to be. You are free to be as protected as you want to be. You are free to be as healthy as you want to be. You are free. Chains broken. Chains broken. All your cords broken. The saving power. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Straining power. After you are saved, that is the power, resurrection power, will keep you, keep you victorious. Tonight, where natural power has failed, switch on to supernatural power. There's no impossibility in your life from tonight.